All right, so all you have to do is you got to find, for chapter 6, you're going to be given a problem that's going to say, hey, find the centroid of this shape. Uh, and here's the origin. So you go ahead and find the centroid. All right? How are we going to do this? Or where do we start out? Well, the one thing that you better know is that there's already standard shapes. Shapes that we already know where the centroid lies. And again, think about this concept of being the balancing point. Okay? I mean, if I ask you, hey, you've got a circular area, and you're holding this pie plate up in the air, and it's a perfect circle, and it's perfectly homogeneous, and it's uniform, and I said, okay, in this circular plate, where's the centroid at? Where are you going to tell me it is? Center. It's in the center. I mean, you, you'd say, hey, i got to line this. Oh, yeah, it's right in the center. If I had a rectangular plate, and I said, okay, hey, where's the centroid of this? You'd say what? Center. Center. Now, if we're dealing with more complicated shapes like a triangle, you might not know it, or a semicircle or something else, you might not know it. But that's why on page 190, we have a table of some basic standard shapes and where the centroid is. And lo and behold, up on page 190, this table 6.1, you're going to see that they give the centroids for a rectangle, a triangle, a circle, and uh, a half circle, semicircle. Okay? And they give the area. This is on page 190. They give the area, and they give an X bar and a Y bar distance. Now, the one thing on this that I would um, sort of be very careful of is, like for the rectangle, I mean, yeah, we already said this. We know the centroid is right in the middle of the rectangle. Well, if the rectangle has a base B and a height H. If the origin is over here at the corner of the rectangle, I think if I said, hey, how far in the x direction do I have to go to get to the centroid, you'd say, what? One half of the base. Okay. That's correct. And if I said, hey, how far up in the y direction do you have to go to get to the centroid, you'd say, half the height. And this is what we got there, b over 2, h over 2. Right? Makes perfect sense. Please be careful. This is a good table. All these values are correct. But the values you have in there for this table are only relative to the origin being where it's shown. If somebody said, hey, I want to get the fifth street, and they're starting out on A Street, and you say go three blocks south, that's great. If somebody always asks you, hey, how do I get to Fifth Street, is your answer always go three blocks south? The answer is no, because it depends where you start. If I start here for my origin, and I said, how far in the X direction do I have to go? to get to my centroid, what would you tell me? Zero. Zero. You're already there. How far in the y direction do I have to go? Half the height. All right? What if my origin was right here? How far do I have to go to get to the centroid? Zero in the x and zero, zero in the y. It depends where you start. So. Be sure you take this table for what it is. It's all well and good, but notice where the origin is in that table. Okay? Now, with these standard shapes, I do want to make note of a couple things. One is the triangle. Triangle is a very common shape that we use in our line of work. I mean, we use triangles all over the place. All right? And the triangles have a base and they have a height. 
And so you know the area is one half base times height. Notice this triangle has an origin, or the triangle that's in my table has an origin out here, sort of on this point. Okay? A centroid, again, is this balancing point, if that's the way you'd like to think about it. Okay? It's over here. My table says, hey, if you're going from this origin, you got to move two-thirds the base to get to, in the x direction, to get to the y centroidal axis. And it's going to say, move one-third the height in the y direction to get to the x centroidal axis. But, is that going to be the same for when my origin's over here? No. If I was saying the x direction here, I'd say, hey, you'd have to travel one-third in the x, or one-third the base in the x direction, one-third the height. What if I was up here? I'd have to travel one-third the base in the x, but I'd have to travel two-thirds the height in the y. So again, be aware of what we're talking about. Here's what I say with triangles. Okay, I don't know if you like this or not, but I, I always say it. People will say, how do I know whether it's one-third or two-thirds? I never get that. What's, what's, how do I know if it's one-third or two-thirds? A triangle has, let me show you this, maybe one way to think of it is a triangle has a zero side. I mean, if I'm looking at the x direction here, it has a side that has zero height to it. It has a side that has a height to it. All right? If I'm moving from the zero side, if that's my origins located over on the zero side of the triangle, I gotta move two thirds. If I'm located on the full side of the triangle, I'm moving one-third. So, you know, and the same thing works in the y direction. In the y direction, I got a zero side, and I got a side that's, <coughs> you know, full. If I'm moving from the zero side, I always got to travel two-thirds. If I'm moving from the full side, I only move a third. So people always say, is it one-third or two-thirds? And people say, hey, the book says two-thirds, one-third. It all depends on where you're coming from. But in a triangle, sometimes they say, well, how can I see? I don't see where that's coming from. So the triangle's sort of unique in that, that uh, characteristic. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. All right, that's standard shapes. If everything was a rectangle, if everything was just a simple rectangle or a simple circle or a simple triangle, life would be good. But our shapes, a lot of times, aren't made up of just one rectangle. Sometimes they are. Sometimes, you know, I can go buy a two by 10 piece of lumber from the uh, uh, building supply store, and you know, hey, that's a rectangle, you know? Or sometimes I see a concrete beam, and a concrete beam is just, you know, a rectangle. All right, that's good, you know? But a lot of times our shapes aren't just one thing, okay? Sometimes, you know, if I, especially if you're in manufacturing, sometimes you have a rectangular plate, but they might cut some holes out or punch some holes out to, for some connections. You know, or they might, you know, how many times have you seen maybe uh, like a cover to maybe a, an electrical box that has the edge clipped off? Okay? So we deal with not just simple shapes, but we deal with what we call, what the book calls, composite shapes. Shapes that are made up of more than just, you know, a rectangle. Okay? So how do we deal with composite shapes? 
that'll be the question that we have to ask. How do we deal with composite shapes? Okay. The first thing I tell you to do is a composite shape. Break them into standard shapes. You know, if you got a complex or composite shape, you know, that's made up of a rectangle and a triangle, break it down into a rectangle and a triangle. Okay? So break it into standard shapes. That's going to be really, really important for you. You know, break them into standard shapes and you're going to be good. What's the second thing you should do? The well, second thing is uh, locate the origin. You got to know where you're coming from. You know. Now, in a homework problem, typically homework problems are going to say, "Hey, here's the origin." If you're dealing with a problem and it doesn't say, "Here's the origin," you've got to pick an origin. Okay. Usually, you probably pick like a corner would be a good place, but you got to know where the origin is. The third thing. <clears throat> that you're going to do is I usually construct a table, okay? And my table might say like shape number, I like, you know, I might call the rectangle shape number one or whatever. Shape number, area, x, when I say ax, and then I'm going to loop this around, you know, I'd have a column called y, and I have another column called AY. Okay? So I'm going to create a table and keep all my values in this table. So I usually say like number or shape number, area, X, AX, Y, and AY. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to complete that table and then I'm going to sum the area column, the AX column, and the AY column. All right, I'm going to sum up. I'm going to complete my table. I'm going to sum the area column, the AX column, and the AY column. Now, what the AX column is, I'll tell you right now, is area times X is AX. Area times Y is AY. <coughs> All right? So that's number four. Number five is I've got some formulas. X bar is equal to sum of the AX column divided by the sum of my area column. And the Y bar is equal to the sum of the AY column divided by the sum of the area column. And folks, that is going to be your process for finding the centroid of a composite shape.